Hello all, this is Halloween, and if you love creating costumes and Halloween as much as I do, you may want to subscribe because I'm going to be showing you how to make some awesome costumes without breaking the bank, maybe even using some items you already have at home. Today's costume is going to be another blast from the past. Growing up in the 80s as a young girl, I can remember going to the grocery store or the drug store with my mom. You go down the aisle, which now has all school supplies. But back in those days, they had like a whole section with uh, crayons and coloring books and activity books. And in that section, there was always a book of paper dolls. You guessed it, today we're going to be a paper doll. If you didn't grow up in the 80s or before, you may not know what that is, but it was like a coloring book or an activity book. And it was, it had one sheet that was basically cardstock and it had the dolls in it and the dolls had a little stand you would bend the stand and put the doll on the stand and then the whole book was full of paper doll attire so different clothing you can put on the paper doll it was a blast I know that I loved them now growing up in the 80s we basically had Disney princess pa paper dolls I don't remember having like regular ones but I would always get the Cinderella one when I was growing up probably got it a few times because <laughs> I loved playing with the paper dolls but today I decided I'm gonna do a 1920s paper doll because if you give me an opportunity to do the 1920s or 30s that's what I'm gonna choose every single time because that's my favorite era today's costume is a paper doll we will be making it out of paper let's get started Today we are going to create a look from the 1920s for our 1920s style paper doll. I'm gonna go with this look. It's simple. It should be easy to achieve. I've got two big boxes here. This one and this one that I'll be cutting and making into my paper dress. And then I have some poster board here and it will be a blue dress. So I've got a couple of different shades of blue here some paint brushes I'm gonna need probably a marker just to outline it and everything and that's pretty much it you're gonna need a box cutter some hot glue and we'll get started box I had two halves of a box and I just cut the front panels off it was a long box and kind of tall this is going to be our paper dress for our paper doll I'm simply going to draw the dress on these panels once I have it covered with poster board. Of course, I have to attach the panels first. Uh, somehow I'll probably just use the Gorilla Tape and attach these two sides. Then I'm gonna cut it into the shape of the dress. Then I'm gonna cover it by hot gluing the poster board to the top so that it has a nice smooth look on the outside. And I'll take progress shots as I go.
I have here what I'm going to be wearing underneath the costume, which is basically a pair of bloomers. Now these bloomers were white, white, uh, and I dyed them with tea to match my corset and my off-white top bustier sort of thing. That's what I will be wearing underneath. That's kind of like what a paper doll would be wearing before you put the clothes on her. Something like this, because they were for children, so it would be something with a little more a little more tasteful than just underwear and a bra. But you can do that if you want to be sexier underneath, you can do that too. This is the wig I'm wearing. It is a finger waved blonde wig. And I have her headpiece on there, just so you can see how that looks. We're gonna be wearing silver shoes. I've got some nude pantyhose and our completed dress, complete with tabs on the side there and up at the top, all made out of cardboard and paper. I'm going to hot glue some ribbon onto the back to kind of be able to tie it onto me. I've got this ribbon here, blue ribbon. We'll get started with our makeup. Time for makeup. It's been a little bit since I've actually recorded. <laughs> um, you know, I did the California raisin costume and that wasn't a lot of being on camera with you guys. You know, the last two or three weeks, a lot has happened <laughs> and in my life. And it just, this has not been a great year. I think next to 2020, this would be my second least favorite. Just uh, a lot of stuff. In January, I injured my knee. I couldn't run around like I normally do. It really put a hitch in my Getty up for months. And then recently, I got a brand new job, which is great and I love it. It was wonderful to get that new job. Then I had to quit the old job that I loved and that was heartbreaking. So it was like, and then I suffered quite a family loss on uh, July 1st. So it's just been a really weird year. Just a lot of stuff happening that I did not anticipate. And you know, so I'm a little off my game right now, if I'm being honest. But I love doing costumes and it does bring me great joy. So if you're hanging out, thank you. If you've subscribed, I appreciate you. And I'm going to do my best to just keep trucking along and giving you the best of me. I already had my foundation on. I just picked a fair foundation. This is going to be regular makeup. Anything you want to, want to use. Now, with the 1920s, it's going to be a smoky eye and a red lip. Oh, that's what they did back then, for the most part. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a real thin eyebrow. They actually had a more thin brow. That's what was... Uh, what was in fashion. So if, you, if you're if you doing a 1920s paper doll like I am and you need some inspiration, I'd look at Clara Bow. She's a great one for the 1920s. Mary Pickford, you know, just people like that. Even uh, Josephine Baker. So I'm just doing my eyebrows. Uh, yeah, regular makeup. If you're younger and you didn't experience the joy of paper dolls growing up, you're missing out a little bit because they were fun. They were really fun. It was a simple pleasure. And they had paper dolls all the way from, I think it started in the 1920s or 30s, which is my favorite era. If you give me a choice to do any era at any point, it's gonna be the 20s and 30s. <laughs> but 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, I'm sure at some point they had a burlesque style paper doll. You can really be flexible with this costume. And I've even seen male paper dolls and families of paper dolls. So it's something that you could do with your family, you know? So that's kind of cool. You're not gonna run out of ideas for paper dolls. I've seen 70s paper dolls, 60s, you know, like I said, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. I mean, all the way up to the 80s. Now the 80s, that's when I was growing up and it really was, the paper dolls were more geared towards Disney princesses like Cinderella, Snow White. I chose to go with something real simple. It's just a halter style dress with little flared skirt at the bottom. The more intricate you make it, sleeves and all of that, the more you're, it's going to not match up with your poses and stuff like that. You could also make different outfits and kind of carry them around and change throughout the night. Just different things like that. And it's cheap. I only got this 1920s style blonde wig because Everybody's seen my black one a million times, so I wanted to get something different. But I mean, technically I already had a wig. All I had to get was the poster board 
but I did get a wig because I wanted to so and I originally saw this someone had done it on Facebook it was a celebrity I think I'm not really sure I don't know all the celebrities these days anymore I've lost track so um she had done it with a real dress and you can do that too just get a real dress and put tabs on it like a paper doll I thought it was awesome like I thought what a cool idea but I thought if I'm gonna do it though it's gonna be paper <laughs> so this is not my original brainchild but it's still a fun look like give me an opportunity to do 1920s you ain't gonna ask me twice is all I'm saying I'm not going to match my dress to the color of my eye we're going with a smoky eye I'm using a dark brown you can use a dark gray uh, even a black charcoal whatever you want there's no right or wrong way to do this, really. Except, you know, the 1920s, they really rocked the charcoal eye. You want to really blend out your, uh, your eyeshadow, too, so that you don't look like Spuds McKenzie. <laughs> if you don't know who that is <laughs> and you're younger, he was another ad mascot. What was he for? Was he Bud Light? I think he was a Bud Light mascot. It was a cute dog. The same kind of dog they used in Frank and Weenie. Tim Burton's movie. He was super cute. But he had the, like the one black eye. I'm being really 80s lately. I don't know where this is all coming from, but <laughs> it's happening. I'm also going to go underneath my eye with a finer brush here. And we're going to do the same to my other eye, of course. They really weren't doing a lot of super fancy stuff, like it was mostly just like the smoky eye. They might have a little bit of a lighter lid, but nothing too crazy, so not like these days. Oh, all the makeup you see. Now that both eyes are done, I may do a little highlight, like I said, just on the lid. Uh, same palette. Go figure. It's uh, Edge of Reality by Kat Von D, but you can use anything. There's this peach colored like highlighter in here. It's gonna just go on my lid a little bit with that. All right, and then that looks pretty good. I got a black pencil and I'm lining my waterline with that. We want a very smoky eye. I thought about doing my face like a drawing and you can if you want to. Because literally they were like drawn images of, of course, they were in a book, you know. But I'm not going to be drawing on my legs or anything and I want everything to match. So if you wanted to kind of draw, you know, where the lines on your face are, just to make it look more like a drawing, you could do that. That's another idea. Now I'm just going to do a little liner on my upper lid. And this is just going to add a little drama. No, like extreme cat eye or anything. They weren't really doing that in the 20s, but just a line of, on my upper lid. I went off camera and I put on these crazy eyelashes because you know how much I love them and how much they love me and doing them on camera is, yeah. I just don't wanna go there today. So I put them on, they're behaving themselves, but I kinda look like a giraffe, so. They're wild, whatever. It's okay to be overly dramatic if you're doing something that's illustrated. Because generally, something illustrated, a picture of a, of a woman, is going to be a little over-exaggerated. Because they want the little girl to be like, oh, I want to dress this pretty lady, you know? I want to go heavy on the blush and all that. I have a lipstick here that melted in my car. <laughs> so I'm going to be, this is kind of a vamp. I'm going to be doing a dainty, Flapper girl lip. Good enough. I've added a little mole. I darkened my mole. I already have one there. <laughs> but I'm gonna go put on my clothes and my wig and everything and we'll take some photos. See you soon.
thank you so much for joining me again today. I hope you loved today's look. It was so cool when I first saw it, I just had to do it. And with the ribbon to tie it on, uh, I tied the ribbon, the two top ribbons around my straps of my bustier thing here. I tied it around there and then I tied one around my waist. If your string is long enough, your string or your ribbon or whatever you use is long enough, you'll be able to tie it and untie it, take it on and off because you're not going to be able to actually sit down in this costume. So you're going to want to take it off. So wear something you're comfortable with wearing in public underneath the costume. That does it for today's episode. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share on your way out. And I'll see you next time.